Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Inside Fitness Radio Presents Total Fitness Podcast. My name is Matthew. I'm Walter. And today we have a very special guest on the show. This is Thomas Elms. He is an actor who is playing the character uh, Captain Milo Walk in the new CBC drama series titled SkyMed. Uh, Thomas, why don't you say hi to everybody um, and we'll kind of give everybody a rundown of what's going on today. Yeah, hey Matthew. Hey, hey Walter. Thanks for having me on the program. I'm super excited to talk about just the whole experience. Um, Sounds like we've got some time, which is great because uh, I like to talk. <laughs> and I've definitely, <laughs> I've definitely got the engine all warmed up today. Um, you know, the feelings are pretty high. You know, SkyMed's coming out in a few days, and it's been nice to sort of rekindle a lot of that with yeah, with right. with my fellow actors and, and the writers and everything. Everyone's everyone's feeling pretty excited about it. So I'm happy Absolutely. to be on. Thanks for having me. Excited, excited to talk about all those things: fitness, mental health, part of the game. Yeah, it was a big part of my experience of it so you know I'm, I'm really you know jazzed to, to be chatting with you guys today absolutely so just to give a bit of a rundown so uh sky med is a new one hour cbc drama series about the intense personal lives of young nurses and pilots flying in air ambulances in northern manitoba uh so this is a character drama wrapped up in a high stakes medical adventure and um it's basically revolving around the young first responders that have to go to the remote north and save lives take care of people um and it's crazy. Like, I didn't know that this was like such a big thing. Like right. it's, it's a real thing. Yeah. Like this is something in Northern Ontario, Northern Alberta, and you know, any Northern province really that you are piloting and saving lives in the remote wilderness. And that is absolutely crazy. So um, why don't you kind of give us a bit of a rundown about your role in the show? And then we can obviously get more in depth and uh, talk about you know, your fitness and how you had to train for everything. In that. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I'm so my character is uh, Milos uh, Novak. Uh, he's a uh, he's he's an airplane captain uh, of a, a twin propeller uh, twin pro twin propeller airplane ambulance effectively is what it is it's a each one of them are it's a custom make every time they make one of those planes and they're custom made for whatever purpose that may be whether it's hauling cargo or in fact like the interior of an ambulance as a first responder vehicle and it was really cool because like myself as a canadian had relatively no idea of the scope of what's involved and like you said some of these more remote communities in in northern canada like you, even looking at a map of manitoba like there's one road that leads north in the whole province. And even after a while, that kind of trails off and it's just thousands and thousands of lakes and it just becomes inaccessible by anything other than airplanes. So there are all these, you know, communities of uh, indigenous, uh, you know, indigenous communities uh, on, you know, uh, reservations and also, you know, just, just, and just people living off the grid in, in communities, whether it's, you know, lumber towns or fishing towns or mining towns, like it's a huge country, Canada, and there's so much ground to cover. And it's crazy to think that they have this lifeline that are these airplanes and the people that fly them. And, you know, it's a lonely experience. It's one that I think you have to need to do because it, you know, it demands a lot of stuff, the isolation, the conditions, the, you know, the long hours, the, you know, it, these people are there hopefully to go on to something better. And so is Novak. Like he doesn't imagine himself staying there for the rest of his life, but he's, uh, he's, you know, responsible enough and he knows how to do his job well enough that he's become a captain. So he's effectively, the pilots work with the first responders to essentially assist them in any way on the job, on the case, whether that is, you know, uh, just an extra pair of hands to do any kind of, you know, medical administering, hold the patient's head, you know, you know, move the stretcher, you know, pick up, pick stuff up. Just they're there basically to just support the, uh, the, the paramedics as they do their job. And so um, he's responsible really as well when it comes to making the final call as to whether we go into a zone that, or whether we risk some conditions that could potentially put the life of the entire team at risk. Um, and that's, you know, it's a massive amount of responsibility when you think about, you know, having to choose between one person who needs medical attention, who's in, you know, dire need or serious, serious, you know, circumstances. And, you know, also risking the lives of your, your coworkers to even get in there and get them out of there in the first place. So there is a chain of command and, and Novak is kind of has that militant attitude towards the job. Like when it came to like the, the, like, I was doing a lot of, you know, I was definitely like a bit of a exercise freak myself 
before that before I booked the show and I'd like gotten into martial arts again like several months earlier and that was really really fueling me for how I wanted to approach like the character I was sort of researching all kinds of like you know the the sort of so like he's a he, his character he, he's from a polish family like he's from an immigrant family and so we kind of i, I kind of really was vibing with that sort of eastern uh, mentality and that sort of eastern uh so i was looking at a lot of like soviet training uh you know exercises and manuals and their whole philosophy around you know training doing you know exercises that you know, for Novak, at least he's not in the gym to get big, to look good, to, you know, pick anyone up or for any sort of vain reasons. He's there, you know, imagine doing push-ups. you know, with mm. 30 pounds of gear on his back, or, you know, he's doing, you know, compound exercises to get him strong enough to lift the wing of a plane off someone, you know, if he needs to in, in that situation or lift a car off somebody or whatever it is that, he needs to do the, to protect people. And I think he fancies himself as a bit of a guardian and he fancies himself as a bit of a leader and he really doesn't like to get along well with anybody, uh, you know, um, but he's also fiercely loyal and protective and he's got a massive, massive heart, but he's got a ton of armor. He's, 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 he's a very armored, armored up guy. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's just protecting his mushy interior that really just wants to be loved and accepted, yeah. you know, not unlike all of us, you know, so, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. 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 That's so, awesome. Yeah. That's sort of, I mean, him in a nutshell without kind of spoiling too much about mm -hmm. the story and what happens with the characters. It, it's, it's a medical drama. Like, man, your sales pitch nailed it. That was fantastic. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but it's, it's all those things. It's an adventure show as well too. So we got to have a taste of that on the filming of it, which was really cool. It gave me a, a massive respect for, what the real life heroes do and put themselves through, you know, mm -hmm. um, in order to get where they want to go in their careers and their lives, or even because they just feel some instinctual need to do it. Like I got to know some of the pilots who were the real life inspiration behind these characters. And they said like, yeah, you know, you really have to, there has to be sort of an insane part of you that needs to do this, yeah. you know, needs to, uh, you know and the way it works is it's very much just you know like if, let's say in my situation as a pilot you're just looking to bank those hours so you can go on to a real commercial airline mm -hmm. but in the meantime you're just looking to do you you're just looking to buddy up with anybody you can whether that's being on the ramp and busting your butt doing cargo for months weeks at a time until one of the pilots finally decides to go like hey come on with us you know and then you get that firsthand experience and then you go from there but you know, I liked the, the, the whole hybrid, uh, they're living in sort of a frat house slash army barracks and there's all this kind of locker room, yeah. you know, <laughs> it, it was cool. It was cool. It reminded me, um, sort of, of when, you know, my, my college friends would go tree planting over the summer to earn some dollars, you know, back in university. And they'd come back with these wild stories of just, you know, like planting 400 trees a day, getting paid like 25 bucks. Mm -hmm. you know almost getting eaten by a bear and then you know every evening it's kind of just like well well who looks good tonight because i need to blow off some steam or you know <laughs> it, it's it i really hope that we were able to capture that kind of feeling in the show which makes it a bit more exciting than i think i mean it's got all the stuff that people want out of a medical drama you know yeah. it's got the it's got the life and the death and the kissing and the love triangles and the you know, hopes and dreams and sacrifices and, and all the good stuff. And I, you know, there's so many cool Canadian voices that are getting, you know, some time in the sun, you know, and on a big, big, you know, platform like Paramount Plus, like, whoa, it's wild. It's even crazy to believe that this project even, you know, got the go ahead, you know, mm -hmm. it, it feels like such a, such a departure or such a big risk to take, you know, mm -hmm. setting it not only just, you know, in Canada, but you know, mostly Canadian stories and, and, and really highlighting a part of the culture that, you know, is sort of not that well known, even by Canadians, mm -hmm. you know, it was great. It was amazing. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's even what Walter and I said, we had no idea for the most part that that was even a thing, right? We knew obviously right. I drove through Canada last year to actually move out to, uh, to BC here uh, in British Columbia, nice. but uh, yeah, I, I didn't even realize until I was driving through Ontario and driving through Manitoba how big this country is and right there are some very very remote spots and it is as you said it there's times where it is extremely dangerous because 
there's just nothing there's nowhere to land. There's nowhere, there's no road access. There's just nothing around for miles yeah. and miles. Right. So yeah, it's, um, it, I will not say anything about the show. We, Walter and I were, are lucky enough to, uh, see the first few episodes. Oh, nice. It, it is incredible. Nice. I don't want to get oh, anything. Oh, away, thanks guys. But uh, very much. it is incredible. Like it is one of those medical dramas or, you know, it, you guys, they capture that with kind of that fraternity, uh, uh, vibe plus, right. you know, the drama and, it's everything you could want out of a TV show that, uh, especially as a Canadian TV show with a lot of Canadian actors, it's, you know, what more could you want, right? So, um, but to get into some of the training, you you were talking about, you did mention something uh, I did like to hear, which was uh, when you are captain, uh, captain of these planes or you are piloting these planes, you do have to really want to do this or even being a first response, you have to really want to do it. Now, in any way, you could respond to that and you could say anything in life. You could, uh, you, you could say that you really have to want to do that. Acting, for example, um, fitness, for example. Yes. So I do want to do want to ask you just to, before we kind of get into the fitness side of things, but with acting, how did this all come to be? Like how, how bad did you want this, that this has now turned into the career and the lifestyle? Like it is incredible. Oh, so interesting. Um, you know, I mean, to be honest, I stumbled, I very much stumbled into this profession, uh, you know, in university. I, I, I started out kind of just as a fresh out of theater school, you know, green as grass actor that knew nothing about television and film other than I wanted to do it and be a part of it and learn it. And I spent, you know, years, you know, going to other classes after university to try and just figure out what the heck it even was, you know, and it took years and years and it really only was like last year in the summertime just as the pandemic was winding down a bit and I'd made some sort of real radical shifts you know in in terms of my like inner life and also you know I like I, I really picked up fitness as a as a way to kind of keep myself mentally stable um you know it was like three hours where I just didn't really have to feel anything, you know, and that really led to, you know, developing a, I got in touch with some of my trainers and stunts, uh, and they kind of really got me back into martial arts, and I completely fell in love with Muay Thai and kickboxing, and, you know, it was so funny, like, you know, three years of theater school, and four years, five years of just kind of dogging it out, doing auditions, not knowing what the TV game was, but having some, you know, natural ability and some craft from the training, like those five, six years, I feel like I learned so little compared to what I learned in, you know, six months of doing martial arts and the way that actually was able to benefit my life. And also my acting career was just astounding. And the amount, like how quickly I felt that I leveled up in terms of the craft of acting you know, was really crazy. You know, the jo I didn't think I would ever really work again uh, in acting when COVID hit. You know, I'd had some success. You know, the order was, you know, a huge stepping stone for me. And I, I owe so much to that cast and that crew and that whole thing. It was such, such a ride. And, you know, but then the pandemic hit and I just never thought I would work again. I honestly didn't. I thought, you know, that was my one little taste of it. And, you know, it's just the way it goes. It just, you know, my number wasn't coming up. And, it was just so funny to feel like the work that I did, you know, and the discipline that I gained and all the skills that I gained, you know, practicing martial arts, how easily and how, how it translated so much to acting and like what I truly believe is good acting. Like I remember Christoph Waltz uh, on this interview with Jerry Seinfeld said that he doesn't really believe that acting is a, an art form. He believes it's more of a craft. And I didn't understand what the heck he was talking about because I was such a, you know, high off the artistry of coming from a theater school where we did Shakespeare and all this kind of stuff and you have all these high-minded artistic hopes and values and stuff and then you realize that you know the tv film world is just so it's so business money driven you know and it's about like what's hot right now and um you know you kind of have to it feels like you have to abandon some of those artistic you know whatever things but I realize nowadays from you know doing like kickboxing and Muay Thai like it's more of a craft than anything. Like we, we do very similar things. Like the work really that happens is in the gym or in class or on your own. And it's preparing for the job or it's preparing for the fight or, 
you know, whatever that parallel is, you know, and, and as an actor, you know, I struggled with a long time figuring out what process meant, you know, and everyone talks about, oh, my process, this process, that, and I didn't really even understand what that meant in the first place. And I was struggling to kind of grapple with these terms that I learned in school when really like just sweating it out in the gym day after day after day. And just, you know, like the groundedness that you get from doing high boxing and kickboxing, like you realize that all your power comes from the ground, you know, it comes from that transfer of energy you know you're like a sprinter on the starting blocks ready to take off and then you you know explode and you throw that roundhouse kick and you know in in a, in a similar way like as actors we're expected to study different schools of acting like there are schools of martial arts like bruce lee you know they say was the sort of the forefather of mixed martial arts because he was the first guy to really say that you know the best style is having no style you know and in fact you should really just take the best parts of every school or you know style and put that in your toolbox and figure out what works for you and chuck what doesn't work because man forget that it's a waste of time and it's such a parallel to developing yourself as an actor you realize you know you try meisner you try stanislavski all these different methods you know um of, of acting and ways to do it and you realize that there is no one clear path but you know just oh man developing like relaxation in the gym when you're sparring with someone and it's your turn to go on the offensive and you need to just you know step on the gas and you know push your body and push your lungs and you know push that pace and then as soon as your attack is over you're back on defense you know and you're focused more on having a soft focus of your opponent watching his body movement you know uh you know being relaxed staying on your breath catching it like all these skills translate so easily to film acting. It was like incredible so much so that I wanted to go back in time and tell myself like, dude, just go back and do kickboxing, you know, stop being so lazy. Stop trying to find the answer in all these classes when really it's just about, and part of the, part of the joy of martial arts is that it's such an emotional experience. Like fighting is such an emotional experience, like getting beaten up, you know, getting trauma from the gym of a per, you know, particularly hard sparring sesh where you, you know, you got, you know, your nose bloodied or you, you know, you can't really walk properly because buddy was hammering those leg <laughs> kicks so hard, you know, it's, you know, you, you feel a bit scared, you feel a bit happy, you feel a bit sad, you know, you feel a bit angry all at the same time. But you got to remember that that stuff gets in the way of focusing on the job, which is defending yourself, you know, and, and, and fighting back. And the same thing works in acting. Like you realize that it's not about like, oh, how do I get myself to cry? It's, it's more just like, I want to cry right now, but I'm trying really hard not to because I got a job to do, you know, mm -hmm. and just just feeling that day by day in the gym. And at the very least, you know, when you do kickboxing, something hurts, you know, you're in pain to some degree, whether it's fatigue or your shins are, you know, bruised up or, you know, someone whacked you and like you've got knocks and bumps and stuff. So you're just so always in tune with your body and these physical sensations, I find that is really nowadays my way into acting. You know, I'm more interested in what like the physical sensation of what the guy is doing and feeling rather than, you know, how do I artistically paint this picture for, you know, it's just, it, it's too complicated for me. You know, I'm, I'm more of a kind of practical, physical person, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, and so it, it's been, it's been such a journey and, you know, that was a, sorry, that's such a long-winded answer to that's a really great. cool question, but uh, yeah, it, I mean, in a weird way, like SkyMed really was a huge, huge uh, shift and, and it was like a new chapter and it, it was cool because that was a, you know, a manifestation in the external world that I feel, felt that I was, you know, really working towards. Like I, I wanted to do something that was more action-based. I wanted to do something that allowed me to bring my physicality and my martial arts and my training on the screen, you know, and I got to play a character that was pretty similar to what I was imagining. And it was such a privilege and such a joy and man. Yeah. Yeah. So that's Ooh. awesome. No, that was a great answer. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got to say it brought back a lot to me too. Um, my background sort of goes the same way, but I remember having teachers in theater school tell people who were overly fit perhaps yeah, but they need to pull back because they weren't going to be in touch with their emotions with all those muscles in the way. Right, right, right. And honestly, those guys could come in and present a physicality that nobody else could do. Right. So I, it's, it's, 
yes, you have to have all those tools in the toolbox and pull out whatever you can. And it'll change over life, right? Yeah. yeah. I can't speak to the act. I can speak to the buy box. So I can speak to yeah. that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything you say is true. I mean, the, the range of emotion you go through when you're in a fight scenario. Right. You do have to just suck it up and sometimes continue on the job. And that's, that's just how things go. And it's like, no matter what I'm feeling, sometimes you do have to pull back those tears. Sometimes you do have to let that anger, <laughs> yeah, out, whatever yeah, yeah. it is. Right. But um, no, I love the, the analogy you use there and the way that obviously fitness has had a huge change on your life. So let's get a little into that now. In terms of the training for SkyMed, you mentioned you were doing a lot of kind of Soviet style training and, you know, obviously getting into the, uh, the kickboxing and all that. Um, what was like a typical day up in the north when you were actually filming? How did that kind of go? It was, um, it was relatively easy and it was such a cool experience because we got to live as a cast for two weeks together and we stayed living together in the same apartment complex for the duration of the filming and so that was in the city city of Winnipeg which is sort of in the southern kind of center of the province so we weren't like we weren't out there out there but you know it would always you know you'd wake up probably if you were filming first thing in the morning it'd be you know a 5 6 a.m wake up you hop in the van you drive probably an hour hour 45 outside the city to whatever you know, wilderness location we were filming at that day, uh, whether it was like a gravel airstrip or, you know, a, you know, a, a park, you know, there's all the, all the exterior stuff that, that was all real and all it, we were really, really feeling that cold of the, you know, the, the Canadian prairie winter where it was like minus 20, minus 30 Celsius. And it was like the coldest I've ever experienced. And it, it was, it was cool. It was cool to have a taste of that, you know, in the filming, but as far as like the routine went, it, you know, you'd film, you know, all day, whether it was a night shoot, you day might start, you know, you, you're picked up at 11 and you go until 11 at night or uh, maybe later if it's just we're filming a night scene. But um, I just got to hand it to them. Like it, even on days where we were filming, like, and you had a few hours, you get home, like they'd be in the gym with me, you know, for at least an hour every day, um, you know, pushing themselves. And they really just, it was kind of that discipline that, that, oh man, I, it's why I love working on a job. You know, you really become like family and, and when you're collaborating on something like that and, you know, everyone really brought their all to the, to those characters. And, and, you know, it was such an honor to be kind of voicing Canadian stories with, with a bunch of fellow Canadian actors and, uh, you know, on an American platform. And how often does that ever happen? You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, for me also, I had such an incredible experience and I, I found, uh, I'll give it um, a shout out to Dave's Nakmoy gym in Winnipeg City. Uh, that was the closest I've come to like a straight, straight Thai boxing gym in North America and Canada. And it was like, I was like a kid on Christmas, like when I walked into that <laughs> place and Dave, uh, Dave, uh, dangerous Dave Zuniga, he's the real deal, man. He's, uh, he, you know, I phoned him up and said, hey, I'm, I'm on this job. I'm doing this TV show and I'm from the West Coast. I like, I love Muay Thai and I'm such a freak. Can I come and train at your gym? And, you know, we came in and we did a private session for an hour and a half and he tossed my butt around that place for, you know, five rounds of sparring and then smashing pads. And it was just such a real taste of the experience and the culture that I'd been falling in love with for so many months back in Vancouver you know, on days where I wasn't filming, you know, I'd take my pads, you know, that I brought with me on the plane and my gear and stuff. And I'd go down to, you know, the down to the gym and, and be put through one of those grinders. That's just like, man, like, you know, as a boxer, like those workouts are just uh, like your lungs are burning, yeah. you know, it's, you're screaming for mercy and, and, you know, but also, I mean, it was so fun and I'm always trying to infect people with Muay Thai. So for me and, you know, Ace and Keon and, and, and Keyshawn and a lot of those other uh, actors and uh, even some of the ladies too, they came in and they smashed the pads a couple of times too. I, I was, you know, wanting to teach everybody everything and they were in the gym with me like pretty much every day. And a lot of that, I think we were able to really bring to the show without spoiling too much of it. And I'm so excited to see some of the scenes I got with, you know, Ace and, and some of the guys where it gets, you know, a little bit, you know, the adrenaline starts to spike and, you know, um, yeah, it was such a pleasure, but, you know, we were in, like, we were accommodated in such a way that I was never more than, 
you know, 10 minutes away from a gym. So even if it was like, you know, you finish at 9 PM or 10 PM, you can still get there for an hour. But I honestly credit like my, my coworkers and my other actors for like kind of being there, you know, with me, because it's so much easier to do when it, you know, when you're there as a team, Mm -hmm. it's part of why I love this whole industry. You just develop such a team bond, you know, it's, it's really special. And it's been such a force of good, definitely in my life and getting to share my love for martial arts too, you know, Mm -hmm. with people that have been, you know, accepting and stuff. Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when it comes to the, the fitness side of things, when you are in that scenario, when you're in the gym, you did mention already, and I kind of wanted to touch about it, uh, touch on it a little bit more because a lot of people use the gym as kind of that safe space or that place to clear the head. And you did mention during COVID, there was all this Am I working again? Yeah. There's this mental health possibly, you know, there's so much in so many Canadians and Americans and people just in general that had the same feelings of what is the next th- step when you're getting into the gym. What is that mindset? What are you thinking about? Or is it literally just, I'm just coming here to be the best version of myself. Wow. Uh, I mean, it really depends on what period of my life, but definitely during the pandemic, it was, it was kind of opposite to what I used it for now, but it was honestly just to have a few hours a day where I just didn't have to feel anything because, you know, your whole self is absorbed in, you know, just wrapping it out. <laughs> um, but, um, man, that's a really interesting question. I think nowadays, you know, or at least I guess let's put it in the context of Winnipeg, you know, what I would do basically in my free time when I wasn't filming is I was, I would pace around my apartment, you know, uh, I, you know, make some pretty workout. I'd sit down, I'd watch the fights on one FC. I'd watch the Muay Thai bouts, or I would watch, you know, 15 minutes of some of the fighters that I idolize in the gym, smashing pads, you know, doing drills, and I would study their technique. You know, mm-hmm. I, that was sort of what I did in my free time when I was in Winnipeg is, you know, I was obsessed with kickboxing and Muay Thai and, um, you know, one championship was, you know, what I was, was always on, you know, on the television, I was always watching the Muay Thai fights and, you know, I, I fell in love with the different, you know, the, the different fighters and the culture that they live in this kind of warrior culture where like your home is the gym, you know, they, they eat sleep and fight and that is their job and it's like it's so incredible because like i've had a taste of it you know like a couple rough spars and being in the gym and being put through the workouts and stuff like it's brutal and they do it every day and wow just i i basically just get completely completely hyped up and fueled up on inspiration you know and whether it's you know i i'll be wanting to go in and practice a certain like technique you know, that I've been studying that day, you know, whether it's, you know, trying to perfect my roundhouse or, you know, just doing some shadow boxing, I I would just always be excited to get into the gym. And and it was such a kind of, yeah, I mean, and it's so much easier when you have that, you know, I I think partly it was just that I was feeling so much the benefits of doing this kind of training in my personal life and in the outside world that I was just hungry for more and I was hungry to learn and I was hungry to keep perfecting the forms you know like you know bruce lee said i don't don't, i'm not worried about the guy who knows ten thousand kicks but the guy who's practiced one kick you know ten thousand times and if you really if you take that philosophy on developing forms and you apply that to acting you realize that you know once you've you know learned enough and you've got the experience enough and you've got a hold of those forms you know that like there's what I like about martial arts and how I apply that to acting is like acting is kind of a weird, ambiguous, nebulous thing. If you get too artsy about it, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. what are we actually talking about here? But when it comes to fighting, like there is a right way to throw a roundhouse kick and there is a wrong way to do it. You know, in the same way, I truly believe that like when it comes to the technical art of acting on screen and on camera, there are techniques that you can practice that will make you better, such as relaxation, breathing, you know, And you practice very similar things in, you know, in in Muay Thai and fighting, you know, when you do combat sports. Um, So to just kind of make things, just make it feel more practical and make it feel like, okay, you know, I am just in here wrapping it out day after day, day after day. Yes, but I'm hungry because I'm progressing at something and I'm learning more 
you know, and, and all this development is really fueling, you know, my career, you know, and, and I want to do more stuff like that. I want to do more. I mean, Joe Cole has basically just done the film of my dreams, which is a prayer before dawn, which is a, you know, a movie about, you know, a white guy in Thailand, you know, who learns Muay Thai. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it was, it was wild. It was incredible, you know, such a, you know, um, yeah. So man, that's just so interesting. I like, I, 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 I owe so much to it, you know, yeah. it's, it's wild. Yeah. No, we, we definitely feel the same way. <laughs> that's why we, yeah. we like that. <laughs> And the time taken off because of COVID when we were forced to do so, it completely changed our way of thinking about so many things. Going back into the gym had a new meaning. It wasn't just, this is what I do for a living. I lift weights. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. like, this is my sanity. This is, is creating right. who I am, right? So, I've had more personal development in just, yeah, the COVID period to now. Again, switching back into the martial arts, getting back into boxing. Than I've had in 10, 15 years of bodybuilding. And it is crazy just when you use the gym or when you use fitness in more of a broader scope than just a vanity, you're using it for function. You're using it for keeping your sanity, you know, using it to overcome hardships in your life, or you use it as that. I mean, Muay Thai and boxing is great for that because it's a great distressor, you know, you, yeah. you use the gym as that outlet, almost, as you said, almost as a creativity um your life does really change and the way you're thinking i mean that's why we started this podcast was it isn't just about that physical let's lose weight let's gain muscle let's look pretty on the beach so we can pick up some girls or guys or whatever it is it has turned into you need to worry not only about the physical side of things you need to worry about how is your mental health doing how are you connecting with people around you are your relationships okay you know, do you manage your finance as well? That's one thing that people just completely forget to realize is fitness is everything. Um, so my next question kind of leads into that. For you, what is fitness right now? Well, that's such an interesting question. question. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, it's just such an interesting question because like I'm just coming off of filming The Boys in the Boat, which was five months in the UK learning how to row, you know, with mm -hmm. eight other actors who were, practically all complete novices and so wow uh, i mean like fitness to me i mean the, i i mean what a privilege like to get have two months before you start filming a movie where you're paid basically to be in the gym you know four or five hours a day trying to condense years worth of athletic training into you know a you know six or eight weeks so you can film this movie and portray some of, you know, the greatest athletes of their generation, you know, it, like mm. fitness is like definitely something that has been such a source of positive growth in my life. And it's something that has helped me level up, you know, as, as a human being, as a man and as an actor, um, but man, fitness to me, all I can think about right now is just the brotherhood and the camaraderie of being in that boat with those guys. And if we're in any way able to capture that feeling, you know, of the speed and, you know, just the balance and the precision and the timing and the, the synchronicity of all those bodies working like, man, it, it was such an experience. And it's the kind of stuff you dream about as an actor, you know, whether it's learning how to ride a horse or swing a sword or, you know, whatever, man, I didn't expect it to be rowing, but <laughs> it turns out like yeah. it's actually a really beautiful experience, you know, working with, you know, those eight people. It's kind of similar to being in the gym and being in a rough spar and you kind of want to get off the ride, but you can't because there's like two minutes left on the clock yeah. and you just have to like, you just, you, you have no choice. It's the same thing. Like you're in this boat and you're being chased by like three other boats and those boats have cameras on them and they're filming you and your legs are burning. And there's this guy in the boat, this jockey, this is the coxswain and he's screaming at you to keep going and you can't stop because mm -hmm. there's seven other guys in that boat and they're all relying on you. And they're all given their all and wow like that's what i think about when i think about fitness it, it's yeah. it's that experience and if we can in any way capture that in the movie which i think we have you know it, no one's going to really have filmed uh you know growing in that way and, and mm -hmm. capture growing in that way that we were able to do thanks to like all this modern technology it's wild mm -hmm. it's absolutely wild and yeah. you know you watch rowing on the telly and it's like 
it's cool, but you're, you know, 40 feet away and they don't look like they're going that fast and it's kind of cool, but they're moving sort of slow and, you know, it's exciting. And then you're in the boat and you just feel the speed that yeah. you're going at, you know, and just the, oh, wow, it's, it's so much adrenaline and such a rush. And I think we really were able to, to capture that. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and man, uh, it was, it was the experience of a lifetime, but that's definitely still, I'm still on a high from that, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, Can't wait to see us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, one of the, uh, at least one of my last questions was uh, again, huge MMA fan. You're a huge tie fighter in that. So uh, obviously, you ended up watching UFC 276 for your favorite fighter, Israel Adesanya. I'm hoping. Did you? Or did you not um, have time for it? Did it recently? Did it happen a few days ago? It did, yes. Or are you oh still kind of on no, that UK I haven't, time? I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, uh, no, okay, haven't. okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, who was he fighting? Uh, who was he fighting? Uh, Jonathan Corrier, I believe? Or Johnny Corrier? Was it? Um, I can't remember. Okay. It was, uh, yeah. yeah, but huge size difference in the guys. But yeah, no, I, I did want to uh, briefly talk about that. Um, because it, well, it does really interesting. My, yeah. my next question is sure. um, when it does come to the Muay Thai, MMA, whatever it might be, is that a future that you, you, you're trying to pursue a little bit? Or is it like, you know what, I want to do the acting, you know, I want to keep it at that. Or is there a part of you that does really want to see, you know, is athletics something that I could really push and have an impact on and create, you know? Oh, man. I mean, with? like, well, I mean, the reality is I'm way too old to start an MMA career, you know, like, <laughs> like Khabib the goat said it best himself, you know what I mean? Like, if you haven't started by the time you're like, what, 16, 17, yeah. like, there's so much learning to do, you know, you have to learn a bit of everything. And like, I'm just too old. But the reality is like, I, I have fallen completely in love with the culture of Muay Thai and the way that it's the exact same anywhere in the world, whether it's the UK or you know, Thailand or you know, wherever it is, like it's the same, like the, the culture is the same, the tradition is the same. And they still play the Thai music and they still wear the Mong Kong and they still bow to the corners and the trainers and they do like a, you know, a dance before the, before the fights. And then they just go out and split each other open. Like, I know that, you know, I'm 28, right. And I've maybe got, you know, till I'm like, what, 35, 38 before I'm seriously in danger of like messing myself <laughs> up. The only thing though, is that like getting a broken nose doesn't really translate very well to being a film actor, you know what I mean? Yep. And I don't really have that face where, you know, I could suit a broken nose terribly well. I, you know, I, I, I'm, you know, happy to say, I guess, but whatever it, <laughs> it is, what it is, you know, and, you Enough. know, but I definitely, I'm, I'm so grateful that I was able to start on this martial arts journey and mm -hmm. continue to practice it during my work as an actor and even get to use some of that on screen. That would really be the dream is that mm -hmm. I get to use these, you know, use my love for this and, and in a way in my screen and television acting. And if at the very least, I just want to be able to, you know, you know, have the physical capability to be in the gym there, pushing myself, learning, even if it's not, you know, necessarily to have a career as a fighter. Like I do want to compete. I do want to go to Thailand. I want to do a six week fight camp. I want to immerse myself in that, in that culture and in that training. Cause I really, I've just fallen in love with it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, like I've just come off of five months of training in the UK for boys in the boat where we were, you know, building up our engines, you know, so we could, perform at this at this level or at least look like we could you know um obviously sort of impossible to do that even if you have three months or four months of you know every day in the gym learning how to do this but yeah you know i hope that i, I just can't wait to be i'm, I'm back now i'm back home mm -hmm. i can't wait to be in the gym and see my old trainer buddies and see if any of that can translate to you know my love yeah. for you know kickboxing and that stuff yeah Absolutely. Great question, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. I, I, the important thing too is, is from my perspective, letting the age thing get in the way is not a problem. Okay. Yeah. Professional career. Yes. I understand because you have a career, but the joy of embracing it can last the rest of your life. And you just keep pushing yourself and pushing yourself a little bit more to see. I mean, I personally am looking for any challenge I can get on a regular basis just to go a little further a little further you've got years to do that mm -hmm. enjoy yeah. it. 
That's beautiful. That's, thank you so much. Yeah. So as, um, uh, as our listeners know, we always like to ask our guests, um, what is one piece of advice that you would give the listeners about anything? It doesn't have to be fitness related. It doesn't have to be related to anything. Just one piece of advice that they can leave with today. Um, you know, 30 seconds to a minute. What would that be that you would have to say to them? Whoa. Um, Put you on the spot here. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Without getting too like fortune cookie-ish about, you know, that question, like I'd say, like if I could talk to a class of young actors um, now, you know, given everything I've, you know, learned and experienced, I would honestly say that like pick up a martial art and practice it. Um, it's not necessarily about destroying things or, you know, hurting anything or it, it's, it really will get you in touch with your body and your, you know, it will push you to your limits and it will get you in touch with what those limits are. And then, you know, maybe you'll be curious that, you know, for me, at least I can only say like that I've felt so many benefits out of like physical training and eventually martial arts, you know, for me, it's been a form of active meditation. And I find that that was such a, you know, practicing relaxation, practicing, you know, being grounded and practicing good technique, like, uh, it, it, for me, it's just such a, it's so nice to feel like in this life that you are progressing at something, you know, and that there's something tangible that you can hold and you can feel you know, uh, and the benefits I've had with really, really getting in touch with my body, you know, and my emotions uh, that you are forced to do as you practice martial arts, like uh, that, I think it transfers really easily to life in general. And it certainly transferred to my my skills and my career as an actor. So, mm -hmm. you know, just obviously, like where I'm still kind of jonesing on martial arts, thanks to you guys, but um, you know, I'm sure there's something a bit more wise I could come up with. But for me, <laughs> at least... Yeah, it's and also like we all know that the benefits of physical exercise and it's hard to get yourself in the gym. But for me, at least falling in love with this art, you know, that and, you know, and falling in love with the people who who, who really do it as a as a lifestyle, you know, that like mm -hmm. the ties or, or whoever that, you know, those people that have really given their life to that. It's incredible, you know, and we don't really have that, you know, very much, you know, in our in our, you know, modern society that that kind of sort of martial, martial culture. And it's fascinating. And it's something that I'm curious about and, you know, has led to a lot of real good and real, you know, imagination and inspiration in my life and, and in my career. Absolutely. So absolutely. Yeah. No, that's all. Right. Honestly, that, that yeah. is awesome. I mean, I can speak to this. I've been doing martial arts since I was four or five years old, Taekwondo, Aikido, kickboxing, jujitsu, whatever it was. And it's, it's a hundred percent true. I mean, the level of dedication it takes to the mindset it takes, the meditative state you have to be in when you are in that fight situation is it is something that everybody should really experience. So that's, that's a great answer. But uh, as it was, um, <clears throat> excuse me, but uh, that is basically all the time we have today. So we did want to thank you so much for taking your time to uh, come on the show mm -hmm. and uh, speak about the new show. Again, guys, CBC, it is out July 10th, 9 p.m. Make sure you check it out, SkyMed. And uh, again, you can, it is really good. I don't want to say too much, but it's, it's amazing. So, um, and Thomas, um, everybody will have the links in the bio, of course, but uh, everybody can find you at Thomas Elms on Instagram, correct? Yeah, that's, that's correct. Yeah, I'm not hard awesome. to find. Uh, Pretty guys, standard. thank you so much for your time. I gave a lot of long-winded answers there. I appreciate you kind of... Yeah sitting with me through some of that stuff but yeah walter and, and matthew thanks so much guys it's been really great talking to you thank you man it's we really pleasure. appreciate it thank you as always right, guys well, oh sorry <laughs> yeah i was just gonna say see you next time thank you yeah thank you very much Excellent. yes um but as always guys thank you so much for listening and watching stay safe stay breezy take care everybody <laughs> Bye bye